And I have my very serious uh, doubts about it. First of all, Dr. John Baumgartner, who's a very serious geophysicist, has been on top of Mount Ararat with geophysical equipment, and they found nothing in there. Number two, Mount Ararat was an active volcano during uh, the final stages of the flood. And I don't think that God has landed the ark on top of an active volcano. Now, the Bible says the mountains of Ararat, so right. there are some sedimentary structures there. But here's a more pragmatic take to it, which might be wrong, but that's my personal view. I believe that Noah and family invented recycling. It seems to me totally irrational to leave that good quality wood out there when you didn't have forest and timber to, to use in the beginning. So I think they just reused it, so even if it was there, it's not there anymore. I want to uh, shift gears here. As a geologist and someone who is uh, very uh, geared to uh, what's happening both above and beneath the earth, uh, this is the 21st century. This is the century uh, that is becoming known as the um, global warming century. Mm -hmm. um, you told me last interview about uh, huge glaciers below the surface of the earth, about massive uh, stores of water uh, south of China, about 600 miles. <laughs> yeah. uh, what about this climate change or global warming um, perspective? Uh, are we onto something, or is there another explanation? Well, first of all, I, I, I personally believe it's more of a climatophobia. It's, it's become a madness lately. Of course, I need to make this very clear from the beginning. As a ministry, we do not deal with these things to the details, right? Our position is we have not enough information to have clear-cut conclusions. However, because I have personally worked in microclimate and paleoclimate, I can provide my personal perspective. What is this. a paleoclimate, by the way? Climates of the past, right. as they have been recorded in rocks, in ice, as I mentioned before, right. and soil, and so on and so forth. Well, here's, here are the number of, a number of facts. The most important being that similar situations have been recorded in the past, of, actually recent past, from the optimum, medieval optimum, between 600 and 800 AD, when Greenland was what the name says, green, on the edges, uh, to uh, previous warm episodes as well as cold episodes like the Little Ice Age between 1350 and 1850. This is nothing new. Question is here, is this mostly triggered by us humans? Well, it would be if carbon dioxide would be the cause of it. I call, personally, I call carbon dioxide a political gas. They say that's the culprit. It is not. Every atmospheric scientist knows that 75% of the greenhouse effect is due to water vapors. Carbon dioxide only is, is, is only uh, responsible 20%. But even more important than that, if this is a global warming caused by a greenhouse effect, then we should see and clearly measure a hot spot in the atmosphere, probably 11 to 12 kilometers high, which is significantly fast, uh, quicker in its warming than the surface of the Earth. It is not there, it's the other way around. The surface of the Earth is warming. Um, at least it used to warm until a, very, a few years ago and it seems to have reversed. So this is not the greenhouse effect that causes actually uh, the warming. What would be the culprit? Obviously the sun, even a child understands that that's the number one source of heat. And climate on Earth is nothing else but the, the Earth's response to the input of heat from the sun. Okay, well, we know that there's a clear association between sunspots and climate. And we have entered two years ago the lowest number of sunspots, actually the longest period with no sunspots recorded in centuries. So now we are switching towards a cold climate. Previous to that, we had a, an incredible activity, many sunspots, and that's why the sun was warmer and its input was warmer. A sunspot is a kind of a flare. Yeah, but actually there are some dark spots on the sun which are connected to the uh, thermonuclear reactions that happen inside the, inside the sun, and they are associated with many more flares than normally, and that increases the input of heat. So what you're saying is that over the next 10, 20 years, we're going to see the climate actually cooling? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm pretty convinced of that, and that's why this hype, they need to make their point now before everybody can see that the climate is not warming anymore. Well, are there going to be scientists with egg on their face a few years from now? I think so. Well... Uh, you know, it is a bandwagon, let's face it this way. It, it, it produces a lot of money for a scientist. If you have any research grant which mentions global warming, you're going to get the money. If not, you're going to be just passed. And I'm afraid it might be some other, even more 
dangerous implications there, but I'd, I'd better hold my horses. Now, are there other scientists who concur with you, or would, oh, yes. are, are you just a crank? No, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm a crank out of many thousands. <laughs> Um, we just have a couple minutes left, and I, I don't want to belabor this, this uh, further than to ask this question. What environmental concerns should we have in the 21st century? Pollution, by all means, which doesn't mean global warming. We have spoiled the God-given uh, I mean, environment, and it is time to clean it up. And Christians should play a role in this. If you think about it, the first ever to have a clear politics of clean environment were Christians, the ones that refused to use internal combustion engines, for example. That's an environmental decision, amongst others, not just a religious one. So we have a tradition in keeping the environment clean, and we should do that. We should lead the way into cleaning up the mess that we produce uh, out of total negligence. Pollution is bad, and it could be physical or even moral pollution for that matter, but definitely the environment needs to be cleaned up. How does your personal faith factor into all of this? Uh, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Your science, your faith, your faith, your science? Uh, how, do, how do the two integrate? Well, I was raised as a non-Christian. I was educated as a non-Christian. So God decided to teach me a lesson. Huh. And he gave me a godly wife. Yeah. And everything changed. Huh. That's the order of things. But I believe that deep down inside, I, I was actually already having questions, which uh, I didn't express necessarily, because, not because I was afraid, but I thought they were not important. I got to the position even before I became a Christian to think, think that there is some creator somewhere and I'm digging in his creation, that's fun. But I didn't want to relate to him. And that's when things have changed and that's what my wife showed me, that you cannot stay away from the creator. Hmm. We'll have more uh, with Dr. Emil Sylvester somewhere down the line, not too far in the distant future. He's uh, a geologist, a hydrogeologist, a karstology. Karstology is? The science of limestone terrains where there are caves. There you go. Uh, you learn something every, every time you sit down with somebody like this. Uh, we'll